Hey guys, this is Mrs. Harbin, and today we are looking at Unit 7, Lesson 5. We have been learning about radicals and exponents, and Lesson 5 today is all about quotients. So let's go ahead and jump right in. With a quick warm-up here, go ahead and simplify each of these radicals. We have the square root of negative 25. You should recognize that we cannot have even roots of negative numbers without uh, going into imaginary numbers here. So the square root of 25 is simply the square root of negative 1 times 25. Using the property product of radicals, we can break that apart into two radicals, the square root of negative i times the square root of 25. And don't forget the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 25 is 5, so we are left with 5i. Hopefully you can see that behind my handwriting. We have x to the 8th, then, divided by x cubed. Using our properties of exponents, we could write out 8x's and then write out 3x times x times x and simplify from there. Or we can remember our properties of exponents and remember that this is just 8 to the x minus 3, which is 8 fifths. And finally, x to the 5x plus 1 divided by x to the 2x minus 3. Just like before, we're going to use our properties of exponents here and simplify that to x to the 3x plus 4. You have 5x plus 1 minus 2x minus 3. I'm going to try to write very small here. And we have 5x minus 2x is 3x and 1 minus negative 3 is positive 4. So we just take our two exponents there and subtract them when we see that they're being divided. All right. Our lesson objective for today is that you will divide radical expressions, divide exponential expressions, and rationalize radical expressions. So there are three things that we are doing dividing radicals, dividing exponents, and rationalizing. And we're going to start with the quotient property of radicals. This is related to the property product of radicals. And the quotient property of radicals says that if the nth root of x and the nth root of y are real numbers, and y is not equal to 0, then the nth root of x divided by y is the same thing as nth root of x divided by nth root of y. The property product of radicals, if you remember, said that if we had the square root of x times, or any root of x times any root of y, we can rewrite that as x times y, as long as the index was the same. We're using an n here to represent any index, whether it's square root, cubed root, the indexes do need to be the same. So, or if we're told that we have the root of xy, we can separate those into two separate roots here, square root of x over square root of y, right? That was the property product. Uh, that was the product property, sorry, product meaning multiplying. The quotient property then, quotient has to do with division. You can see that it's related here. So if we have a rational number or a fraction inside a radicand, we can split that into two separate radicals with a radical over our numerator and a radical over our denominator. And that is going to come in handy because when we are simplifying radical expressions, we have a couple of ways that we know when it's completely simplified. So first of all, there will be no perfect nth powers in the radicand. Uh, what that means is if, for example, we were taking the square root of 64, this is not completely simplified because we have a perfect square in our radicand. If we were taking the cubed root of 27 and we stopped right there, it's not completely simplified because we have a perfect cube inside our radicand. So we don't want to have any perfect powers in our radicand. So that's, we know it's simplified when we have no perfect powers. We know it's simplified when there are no fractions in the radicand. So leaving it as square root of 3 over 4 is not completely simplified. So we need to uh, get rid of that fraction, which is what we're going to work on today. Uh, 
And we know that it's simplified when there are no radicals in the denominator. So having 2 over the square root of 3 is not completely simplified. And we've worked with this a little bit this year uh, when we were practicing simplifying radicals. We're, done, we're just going to build on that today and make sure that we have this process down um, completely as we're working through this unit. All right. When simplifying a cubed root, you're going to rationalize the denominator by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by a factor that makes the radicand and the denominator a perfect cube. Now, this will make more sense when we see it with some numbers. Okay, but rationalizing, uh, let's go back here to 2 over root 3. To rationalize the denominator here, if you remember, we just had to multiply it by the radical that was in the denominator. So we multiplied it by 1. Well, another way that we can write 1 is root 3 over 3. And that gave us 2 square root of 3 over 3. That's a funny 3 there. So we rationalized the denominator here when we had this even root. When working with odd roots, like cubed roots, we have to rationalize it a little bit differently. So let's take a look at an example here. We have the cubed root of 2 over 12. The first thing that we want to do is simplify this 2 over 12 fraction, or this 2 over 12 rational number. So we're going to simplify that, and that becomes the cubed root of 1 over 6. Then using our quotient property of radicals, we're going to rewrite that as the cubed root of 1 over, or divided by, the cubed root of 6. The cubed root of 1 is just 1, so we can go ahead and simplify that, but the cubed root of 6 can't be simplified. That's not a perfect cube, and it doesn't have any factors that are perfect cubes. So now we need to go ahead and rationalize the denominator. We know that it's not completely simplified because our third rule for simplifying is that we can't have any radicals in the denominator. Well, we have a radical in the denominator, so we need to simplify that. So when rationalizing uh, denominators that are not even numbers, not perfect squares here, we need to multiply it by something that will make this a perfect cube. This is 6 to the first power. If I multiply it by 6 to the second power, I'm going to end up with 6 to the third power. And 6 to the third power cubed, that's a perfect cube. So we're going to multiply both our top and our bottom here by the cubed root of 6 squared. And the reason we have to do the top and the bottom, whatever we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom. But essentially, we're really just multiplying it by 1, because anything over itself is 1. Right? When we multiply that, we get the cubed root of 6 squared on the top, and on the bottom, the cubed root of 6 to the third. So again, we're trying to make sure our exponents here add up to 3. Because the cubed root of 6 cubed, you guys know that that will just cancel itself out. So we're left with the cubed root of 36 equals 6. All right, let's go through our rules here. There are no perfect powers in the radicand. There's no perfect nth powers. Uh, 36 is a perfect square, but it's not a perfect cube, so we're good there. There are no fractions in the radicand. In the radicand itself, I have 36. That's not a fraction. And there are no radicals in the denominator. So check, check, check. It looks like my answer has been completely simplified. Now, we're going to take a look at some expressions involving imaginary numbers. And these can be simplified the same way as other radical expressions, or the same way other radical expressions are simplified after they are expressed in terms of i. So let's take a look at this example here. We have 18 over 3 square root of negative 3. We know that this is not simplified because we have a uh, radical or a radicand in the denominator. So we haven't simplified it just yet. Right? The first thing that we want to do is reduce our fraction because 18 divided by 3 can be reduced. And we want to write our negative root here, write it in terms of i. We don't want to leave it as negative or square root of negative 3. So we're going to rewrite that as 18 divided by 3 simplifies to 6. And the square root of negative 3 simplifies to i3. Right? We're still not completely simplified because we still have a radical in our denominator. So we're going to go ahead and rationalize the denominator. And in order to do that, we're going to multiply i root 3 times i root 3. Remember, multiplying a root by itself eliminates that root. 
whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So that we're essentially multiplying this whole thing just by one, just expressing our one in a different way. And when we multiply that, we get 6i root 3 over 3i squared. We can simplify this a little more because we know that i squared is negative 1. So 6i root 3 over 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. But we're not done just yet because we can simplify our coefficients here. 6 divided by negative 3. That gives us negative 2i root 3. According to the three things that we had earlier, let's see if our uh, expression has been simplified. There are no perfect powers in the radicand. All right, this is a square root. 3 is not a perfect square, so we're good there. There are no fractions in the radicand. Nope, no fractions. And there are no radicals in the denominator. We don't even have a denominator anymore. So we have met all three requirements for simplifying this expression. All right, let's try one with another imaginary number here. 2 plus 6i divided by 3i. The first thing that we want to do is go ahead and write that as a fraction. So 2 plus 6i over 3i. Okay. Now, this has not been rationalized. 3i is just really, if you remember, negative 3. So we still have something in the denominator that we don't want in the denominator. So we're going to go ahead and rationalize that. Okay. After... Sorry about that brief interruption here. So we're going to go ahead and rationalize the denominator. Now we're not multiplying it by 3i because the only thing we need to rationalize here is the i. We need to turn this into an i squared. And why is that? Because i squared equals negative 1. That will get rid of my imaginary number down here in the bottom of our fraction. So we're going to multiply with the top and the bottom by i over i. Remember anything over itself is just 1, so we're really just multiplying it by one, we're not changing the value of anything here. And when we multiply that by i, we get 2i plus 6i squared. We would have had to distribute that i. And on the bottom, we get 3i squared. Well, we know i squared is negative one, so we're gonna go ahead and substitute in our negative one, and that changes to 2i minus six, because six times negative one is negative six, and negative, three on the bottom. Because we have two terms on the top with a common denominator, we can go ahead and split that into uh, two separate fractions here. Your book will refer to that as a plus bi form, which is one real number and one imaginary number. So this is complex form. So we have two i over negative three plus negative six over negative three. Negative 6 over negative 3 simplifies to 2. So we're going to write our final answer as real number minus our imaginary number here. A plus B I form or 2 plus negative 2 over 3 I. 2 minus 2 thirds I. Okay. Again, let's check our work here and make sure that it is simplified. We don't have any perfect powers in the radicand. We have no fractions in a radicand, and we have no radicals in the denominator. Again, we could not leave the i in the bottom of our fraction here because that's really just the square root of negative 3. It's just another way to express that, which counts as having a radical in the denominator. So we did have to rationalize and simplify that. Fractional exponents in a denominator should also be rationalized. Remember that there are times that you might have a fractional exponent. And a fractional exponent is just another way to write a radicand. So those fractional exponents in the denominator also count as having radicals in the denominator. And we just said we can't have radicals in the denominator. So we're going to need to rationalize those as well. There will be times when we have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by a conjugate of the original denominator. Now, you were introduced to conjugates previously. Remember that a conjugate, let's say we have x plus y, 
Uh, a conjugate is just multiplying it, same terms, the x and the y stay the same, but an opposite sign here. And that would pr produce a difference of squares, and it would get rid of our outside and our inside terms when we FOIL. So there are times we're going to have to multiply by the conjugate. Before we get into those, I feel like this is a good place to stop for part one. When you guys come back for part two, we're going to look at how to rationalize fractional exponents, and we're going to take a look at some problems where we have to multiply by the conjugate.